Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of 10 Forward Weekly. Uh, my name is Mike Fatum. Uh, I am your community manager, also known as Ambassador Kel. Uh, and uh, blah, blah, blah. I am joined today by the face of Weston and the ghost of John. Say hey. hello, face and ghost. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> John, it turns out, does not have a webcam, so we're just going to be listening to his uh, his slightly tinny voice um, because it sounds like his microphone also might be uh, yeeted into the sun. Uh, <laughs> um, but hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Um, before we get started, I wanted to talk to y'all about something while I have you, uh, and I'm just, I should have told Weston and John I was going to do this, but I didn't decide I didn't fully decide I was going to do it until about five minutes ago. So. Uh, I apologize for the awkwardness of you guys having to listen to me talk for a minute. Um, there's two things. First of all, I know this is going to be a co topic that comes up on the stream. Uh, yes, the in-game calendar is gone. No, it's not coming back. No, it wasn't because of any leaks. It was just because it was a piece of a piece of technology that was constantly, constantly giving you guys bad information, um, and uh, it was basically. If we made any changes to the calendar, they wouldn't update in time, and then people who've been planning for a Dilithium weekend for three weeks would find out it was suddenly, you know, a, uh, a Borg uh, Red Alert weekend and just get super mad at us. Um, so uh, it's gone. It's not coming back. I love you all. The second thing is, uh, since the calendar thing, um, the discourse among our fan sites and especially the stuff directed at me personally, has gotten kind of vicious. Um, and so I want to, I've said this on stream a couple of times before, I really want to reiterate once again to everybody here, please always remember, no matter how upset you are, and you're right to be upset about some things, you're right to be upset that when I, when I screw up on a blog, but please remember no matter how upset you are, the person on the other side of the keyboard is still a human person. And you are still talking to a person who, in my case, is, it has to read all of your comments. Uh, but in the cases of many of the developers, uh, does not, but chooses to anyway because they love you guys. Um, please, 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 there's a line, and I think you guys know where it is. It's not, um, it's not, why, what, you guys can't hear me? Oh, well, that's weird. Okay, well, I'll turn it up a little bit. Um, the the uh, the line is not uh, blah blah. blah. Um, the 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 line. I think you guys know where the line is between expressing your disappointment in something and coming at somebody and calling them names or calling them incompetent or you know calling for their head. Um, I, I, there, I got in trouble once with y'all because I said I was disappointed in the community because of a bunch of people decided to go and bully somebody else um, in our community. Um, and the, the constant feedback that I got back from that was, well, it's not everyone in the community who's like that. Uh, if it's no, if you're, That's cool. If it's not everybody in the community that's like that. But if you're in the community and you're not like that, uh, please take the time to stand up against the people who are. Again, I'm not saying you can't criticize Star Trek Online. I can't, I'm not saying you can't criticize decisions we've made, uh, and I can understand why you might be upset by some of them, but try to find that line and try not to directly attack people. All right, we're moving on. Uh, so, Weston and John, welcome to the show. Sorry for dropping that on you <laughs> right at the beginning. <laughs> uh, we're here to talk about um, a new and exciting development, uh, which is this week we announced our upcoming event, which we can't say the name of yet because it's the same name as the something else upcoming that we're not allowed to talk about yet. <laughs> but we have an event coming up. And uh, if you play enough content through it, which will be the TFO and a couple of episodes and... Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, someone in chat just reminded me. I said I was going to do fan art this week, and I almost forgot. Sorry. We're going to look yeah. at fan art, and then we'll talk about the Red Angel suit. But feel free to throw in commentary, y you two, while we're looking at it. You can see stuff on my screen, right? Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. So, um, unfortunately, I don't have the... Ex the. It doesn't show me who's the... Uh, um, who the source of this is, but this is a really, really cool image. Let's see, properties, is that gonna show me? No. 
Okay. Uh, I know this one was from uh, Stu1701, and it's an awesome shot of the new legendary Romulan. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Uh, this is from Duncan Idaho. This is Starfleet's new uh, tardigrade uh, <laughs> tardigrade weapon. <laughs> I think it's a little more advanced than the one Ja'ula has. When are, we, sure. when are we getting that as a mission reward? <laughs> I'm going to try and figure out why my Just audio... Slap it on top of the ship. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it looks go. like it's a ground weapon, but I like it more on top of a ship. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, this is also from Duncan. This is a... Um, uh, I posted a bookshelf as a hint for uh, the um, ARG last week, so that was the Ikean War instead of the Iconian War. Um, let's see. Let me make sure my audio is coming in through the right thing. People are saying they can barely hear me. Uh, the next couple are going to be screenshots of um, different ships with the new uh, the new Alliance thing. The Alliance thing. Good job, Mike. <laughs> the new Alliance shield. Uh, let's see. Let's try this. Let me know if that's any better, you guys. Uh, it looks like it might be better. Um, okay. Uh, was that everything? That wasn't everything I got sent this week. Why did it loop already? Arg. All right. I will... Uh, I will figure out what happened there. In the meantime, let's talk about the Red Angel suit. Okay, so the Red Angel was the chief mystery uh, behind Season 2 of Star Trek Discovery. Um, and uh, it's a uh, blah, blah, blah. It's um, uh, this, this huge, powerful suit with these really cool animations that does awesome stuff, uh, like traveling through time and saving people's life at the last minute. And, of course, because we have everything in the show in our game, we had to turn that into an in-game item. So, John, how did you approach the idea of making the Red Angel suit something that players could uh, have and use? Oh, that was a really interesting puzzle. Um, there's a few things that jump right out at you, um, both good and bad. Uh, the first good thing is that, well, it's a ground uh, suit, and it's pretty rare for Star Trek to give us something that's really iconic that's a ground uh, method of play. Like, different ships have very strongly different identities, but like a different phaser doesn't have that much of a different identity. The Red Angel suit definitely does. So that was really exciting. But then on the other side, its main move is time travel, and we can't send you back to level 40 to fix something that happened then. Like, we can't actually do <laughs> the, like, marquee show thing it did, but we kind of can. Um, and I guess that, you know, I assume we want to wait and talk about the abilities a little later. I'll let you call that ball, but um, that leads right into what does the suit actually do, and that was a really fun <laughs> process as well. Basically taking the, like, really cool moments from the show and turning them into abilities and then also expanding on that a little bit. And but West and Weston, this was a particular challenge from an animation standpoint. I I've heard. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what went into making the suit go and do the things? <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I mean, pretty obvious that we started working on this thing a while back, back during the anniversary, since that's when we first saw the Red Angel. Um. During that time, like we didn't have anything even remotely close to <laughs> like the wings for the suit. So that had to be made in an entirely new skeleton, entirely new animation set. Um, and it was kind of the first time of something we'd done something similar to that in this kind of regard. So uh, there was there was a lot of um, definitely a lot of challenges that went into getting all of that, all the different pieces of that moving together and working like we see it doing in the show. What I love about this suit, and we'll see a little bit more of that as we play around with it in a minute, but um, uh, for those of you who played uh, Renegade's Regret or Clark's Lucky, Quark's Lucky 7, uh, I can talk, I swear, um, this is the same tech that was used for that, that allowed you to, to take uh, control of another character for a while. It's called B-Critter Tech. And so what this is actually doing is transforming you into um, a different character with the Red Angel suit's visuals and powers um now people are asking in chat does that mean uh that we could then do like a tfo where you can play as a voth uh, a voth mech uh probably i don't know if we would but you can <laughs> that's up to uh uh people in more position of storyline power than me <laughs> <laughs> um john can you talk a little bit about how you how integrating the b critter tech works um Sure. Uh, essentially, like I, I don't know the code side implementation, sure. but um, from the scripting side, which is the layer I get access to, it's sort of 
replaces you with another character, and then there's a number of uh, options we have to allow certain powers to work or, or stay with you. And um, it was a little touch and go, so uh, hopefully it all works perfectly when it ships, but there might be a little bit of revision necessary. But where we landed is that you are able to keep all of your passives, all of your gear, all the items you have, all the traits you have should work fine in Red Angel mode. But you won't have access to your kit modules, those will be replaced by the Red Angel special abilities. Um, the mode itself lasts for a little period of time, and then you switch back, and it has a longer recharge time because we don't want it to just like sort of supplant all the decisions you've made on how you want your character to play. <laughs> but it's like a sort of a an empowered state that you go into for a little length of time to uh, make a fight easier or to just uh, flex on the enemy <laughs> <laughs> or to save yourself. Firepower! <laughs> and then you switch back. Yeah. Um, and then while you're in that mode, we have complete freedom to do anything. Like, there's a mission where you become a Tribble and navigate a maze uh, that uses the same tech. Um, this is not as extreme as that, because you get access to all your items and passives and traits and stuff, but it's it's pretty crazy. Yeah. You that's fly, cool. like, not true flight, but like a levitate that's much faster than normal running. Um, unfortunately, too many issues with true flight to do actual free flight. Uh, several people are saying, "What about what? What is this triple mission?" It's the first I've heard of it too, John. Did you just spoil yeah, something by accident? Same me. <laughs> oh no, that's oh, I, it was way long ago when I leveled up my guy. I'm trying to remember exactly how it works, but you um, you you have to speak to like the or there's like a wise triple you can talk to that's hidden in the main. Uh, let, I'll just Google it and that's get back an to you. That's an temporal ambassador. That's that sounds right. I think okay. it was a time travel mission. I yeah, I don't know this way. one, but people are saying Thol someone said Tholian mission in chat in between all the what you could do what <laughs> yeah it's temporal ambassador okay yeah okay got it got it okay one of my favorite cool. missions <laughs> I'm glad I got to bring more attention to that that mission's yeah. great everyone should go play all of the cool old missions including all the old Klingon ta content which is we're getting uh, going to be updating very 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 soon ah! okay. Um, so why don't we dive in and take a look at this baby in action. I'm going to switch over to gameplay and see if this works. Oh my god, it does. All right. Uh, I'm going to pull up chat on my phone, so forgive me for being a weirdo. Uh, there we go. And then turn my phone down so I don't hear myself talking back to myself. All right, so here we are in the Voth ground zone because it was the first place I could think of that was, you know, good combat. Uh, now, you'll notice this character was built by Jet for um, starship stuff. They have no weapons and no uh, kits. So this is not going to be the best showing off of this this power, but I will do my best here. Uh oh Or the game will crash. Oh, oh I still no. have you guys? <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Okay, good. Good. Uh, yep, that was, uh, that was a problem. Uh, okay, so apparently the audio from the game is way too loud. Let me turn that down. Um. Weird. <laughs> uh, people are saying to use the Red Angel suit to go back to before the crash. That sounds like a good plan. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. <clears throat> I wonder if I just found a bug. If you use the Red Angel suit on the Voth Battle Zone, you crash. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, yeah, people are saying they um, the game was too loud uh, when it was live. Uh, I hear you. I will attempt to fix that as I go back in. Oh, John, here's a question that we've been getting uh, constantly for the last couple of days. Actually, two that I have for you. Um, All right. One, can you customize the color of the Red Angel suit? Is it like a piece of armor you can customize, or is it just something that appears when you use the powers? Ah, yeah. The answer to that question is yes, no. Yes, no. Um, okay. So it is a... When you use the power, your, your visual is changed to the Red Angel visual during the duration of the power. And separately... When you get the Red Angel suit in the first place, you unlock it in the tailor and can uh, mess with it in there. I'm not sure if you can customize the color of it. I'm not familiar enough with it in the tailor to know that. Okay, but so you um, can, you you can, can, you can actually get it in the tailor and use it. 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. And is it uh, also an EV suit? Oh, man. We went back and forth on that so many times, I don't honestly remember off the top of my head. <laughs> I think no is where we landed. We wanted it to be an EV suit. We have a diplomatic mission. I'm not sure. I, I'm honestly, I don't remember. All right. Well, we're about to see the first ability here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me know. Here we go. And I'm dead. And there's the Red Angel appearing and resurrecting me from the dead. Said I am flying. It's sort of a, more of a hovering. There is there is stuff happening. Right, so one, those are the two the main two weapons. Uh, let's see. You are at a generator point. All Move right. the device let's to the end of power. the platform this by one? activating this nearby consoles. That's not the power button I meant to press. Let's try this one. Stop the boss from activating their own console oh. and pushing the device All right, back. So I have. Oh, he died. So that's not going to do much for us. <laughs> uh, normally, that power would shunt that gentleman into the future. Ah, but now I have run out of time. Now you guys will have to wait two, two minutes before you can do that again. I do not. Yeah, at least at current yeah, speed, um, some of that stuff might still change before release. Like, all the power should be the same, but balancing points, like how much damage does something do, how long does it last, that stuff uh, may change. Got it. Uh, oh, that's weird. Okay, hold on. The, the screen is strangely zoomed in, so people aren't seeing this. Let me Let me fix it. So Weston, can you talk a little bit about um, how this this whole thing with like the animation and stuff works when you transfer into your into your suit and back out? Sure. So um, Enemy target are in a fake extension to your character. Uh, as weird as that kind of sounds. So uh, when they are in your they initially spawn in a spawn on your back and they sound killed. Let's try that again. Sorry, folks. I hope you could hear some of that. Cooldown on the Resurrect is currently two minutes. Okay. Alright, so let's try that again. Um, we, uh, we could, they couldn't hear anything you guys said uh, for most of that, so we're just going to repeat it because <laughs> the oh, game no. knows. Uh, so, Wes, <laughs> talk a little bit about the, how the animation for this bad boy works. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, when you activate the power, the wings come out of the uh, the back of the suit, just like they do in the show. Um, at which point, they it was designed so that they mimic all the movements that the player will do. So, anytime you move, as you move around in, let's say, like a circle or something, you'll know that the wings uh, are motioning towards the direction that you're moving as well. Um, they will also react to some of the special abilities, uh, for, or like when you start the suit and also when it uh, finishes up and closes the wings in the back before you change back. Nice. 
Uh, Weston, someone in chat was asking if that w if uh, the flying animation was from Champions or if you cooked up something new. I think it's our standard flying animation, yeah? It is a standard flying animation, though if you're looking for something in STO to reference it to, it was actually used by the Davidians. Oh, we're ghost people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm looking for more Voth to fight. Um so, uh, uh, John, did you get an answer on the EV suit questions? They didn't hear that. Yep. I know you're... Does not appear to be an EV suit. Does not appear to be an EV suit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we switched back and forth on it a lot, and due to technical limitations, we ended up not doing it. Got it. All right. So that power I just activated is the um, time travel shunt power. John, can you talk a little bit about how, how that works and what it does? Ah, that one's really sweet. You target an enemy, and that enemy and all nearby enemies take a bunch of damage and are kicked forward in time eight seconds. They're just removed from the game for that period of time. And so they can't all be targeted. They'll... They can't be damaged. They can't damage you. They can't do anything. They can't move. And so it's a and... I'll deal with that problem later field is what it is. <laughs> or you just set yourself up a pile of corpses that'll <laughs> show up later, depending on how <laughs> That's much. That's true. They depending have on how much damage they can do. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, all right, let's find another group of Voths so I can demonstrate. Uh, the other power on this guy. Uh, let me say, flying around in this thing feels really fun. Like it, that's a super super cool um, experience. It just it's it all just, those animations. It just looks so good. Yeah, the flying animations for the Davidians was always really cool. They've been they've been improved a little bit since. Yeah. 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 All right, uh, so I'm going to try the uh, the next power, which is the EMP burst. Now, will that do anything to this dinosaur here? Um, I don't actually have any visual signal from right from you right now. It's just a big old black screen, so I'm oh, trying fun. to get the stream up on the browser because Discord doesn't seem to be functioning quite right. Uh, yeah, but... same. I've just I've just been watching the stream. On, oh, that's on Twitch. that's <laughs> super annoying. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can fix that for you guys. Hold on. Uh, uh it's fine. Scary. I'll just run it on Twitch. Turn on screen, stream Star Trek Online. Let's see if that just shows you. Do you see it now? Yeah. Okay. There we great. go. Fabulous. Anyway, uh, so how the EMP works is it disables all mechanical abilities for anything caught in the area for a pretty long stretch of time. So uh, like stuff like teeth and claws won't be disabled, but anything like a, a phaser weapon or uh, a special kit module or anything like that would be disabled. And then any enemies that are either electronic or incorporeal or mechanical, like Borg or summon turrets or Davidians, take a pretty huge amount of electrical damage. Okay, that's cool. And so the cooldown on activating the suit is about two minutes. So you finish, how long is the suit active once you turn it on? Uh, 40 seconds, I think. 40 seconds, okay, so you've got 45? a- 45? I'll 40... get you the exact number. Okay, but you got a, a little bit less than a minute uptime and then uh, full, um, and then two minute cooldown, and then you're back up again. So this is the sort of thing uh, I would think, and you guys can tell me if I'm right or wrong here. Uh-oh. I'm getting killed by the dinosaurs I sent forward in time. This is why you never send dinosaurs <laughs> forward in time, guys. Um, I mean, just look at what happened to the Dyson Spear. <laughs> right? Okay, there we go. And there's the Red <laughs> Angel bringing me back from the dead. Uh, so what happens when oh, you yeah, get resurrected? Worth... John? Um... Both when you get resurrected and when you first activate Red Angel mode, there's a giant red shockwave um, that knocks enemies back, uh, disables them briefly, and does a bunch of damage. Is it? Is there... I don't know if this is true or not. Do enemies not get knocked back if they're of a certain size in our game? Uh, some enemies are immune to knockback, okay, yeah. That's and probably, T this T-Rex is probably immune to knockback, yeah. Oh, getting shot. Not sure from where. Ah, uh, that drone up there. The revive animation specifically was based off the uh, the first disappearance of the Red Angel in Season 2 of Discovery. Oh, I forget what episode that was okay. in. Okay. But uh, it has that moment where she comes in and then immediately is, like, pulled back by the time vortex. Uh, somebody in chat was saying that the Red Angel, the Red Angel says, My servants never die! <laughs> Oops. There we go. Uh, 
Um, the basic attacks on the Red Angel suit hit a fair bit harder than a normal rifle-type we energy weapon would. And then, in addition, you get a fair amount of passive stats during Red Angel mode. Uh, a bunch of damage resistance and uh, damage improvement. Okay, there we go. <laughs> For a second, my keyboard wasn't responding. This wireless, working with wireless keyboards and mouse, mice has been the bane of my work-from-home existence. This is why oh, I, yeah. stopped. I, I gave up on wireless stuff for computers a long time ago because of that. Yeah, yeah agreed. I, I like just... wireless headset, but wireless mouse and keyboard is, like, that's for the couch. That's not for the computer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, yeah, and unfortunately, my computer is in my living room, so, and I don't really have, with the nursery, uh, another room to turn into an office. Now here's an interesting question that we may be about to find out the answer to. If you die while in Red Angel mode, will the Red Angel appear to resurrect you? Yes. Yes, uh, she will. If it's, yeah, if it's available, then yes. If it's on cooldown, then no. Okay. So people are asking to take a look at the actual hard physical numbers here, so I'll stop fighting this T-Rex for a minute. Of course, because it doesn't completely replace your character stats, a lot of that is going to be derived from what you your have equipped, stats what your are. traits are, and so on. Right, and I think this, this character, character appears has to not have a ton. nothing equipped. Yeah, so this is this is a character that Jet built 100% for a spaceship, and so these stats are going to be based on that, so don't use these numbers as hard numbers. Also, I don't believe those numbers are actually correct, because that suit doesn't have a, a level to it. Oh, oh, yeah, that's like a pure white one. I may have given myself the wrong version then. Uh, let's see if I can fix that. Uh, so instead of dynamic, do I want to put gold on the end here? Uh, well, you either want to give yourself the dynamic version that is gold using give dynamic item, or if you're just using give item, give yourself the levelless version. Okay. Let's try that again. That might explain why I was doing so low damage to that T-Rex, too. Yeah. Though, I mean, you generally get a lot of passive power from having traits and stuff, so having nothing slotted is still going to Also not going to work very well. Strange yeah. outcome. All right, let's get this. A good rule of thumb is that the, uh, the weapon on the Red Angel suit and the cone fire on the Red Angel suit are, like, maybe a third again as powerful as a rifle. So a rifle plus a third. Um... Rough, very rough roughly, ballpark. Roughly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why won't you give me exact numbers, John? The banish uh, hits pretty hard. Um, if you I think like about like the initial tick of damage on something like, uh, if sorry. you think about like the initial burst on like a grenade or something, um, it's worth like two or three of those. Okay, cool. That's probably right. a couple thousand damage then. Now that I've got a decent. Uh, version of the suit, if not a decent build. Hello, chatty. Yes, you are slowly becoming Lapcat. I will once again pull up the tooltip so you guys can take a look at it. I am being attacked. <laughs> Hold on, folks! Okay. Take that, future me. Get back here and resurrect me. Yeah, what are you doing? Slacking on the job, future <laughs> me? All right. Um... Close the temporal paradox loop. <laughs> Where can I go that isn't there goes my keyboard again. Okay, there we go. Just gonna. Don't think there's any enemies over here. All right, there you guys go. <laughs> uh, Duncan Idaho says when players start earning this, we'll need Flight of the Valkyries playing during the Dyson bo boss round for all the angels that will be descending. Uh, that's that's <laughs> very true. Luckily, we already have a Klingon version of uh, Flight of the Valkyries. Uh, I wish that Chatty here was eating lunch. Someone in chat said we're, I'm bothering him while he's eating his lunch. Uh, he is. That is not what he's licking. Welcome to cat ho cat ownership. Uh, Master of Overskill wants to know if you transform into the Red Angel, uh, do existing buffs uh, stay or are they removed? Huh. Good question. Hmm. Give me a second. Okay. My guess is removed. Let's see if I'm right. Okay. Having my own computer during these streams is so actually helpful. rather nice. 
Uh, someone was asking if it can be re-engineered. Looking at it, it does not look like it can. Um, Neos472 was asking if we get the uh, Red Angel suit to use in the tailor. I believe the answer to that was yes. Yep. Yep. So you guys, mm -hmm. you guys can just wear it. You can be a Red Angel who transforms into a Red Angel if you want. Also, you can re-engineer the Red Angel suit. You just cannot re-engineer a levelless item. And ah. if, uh, so, if you're still using the levelless one, you won't. I am be indeed able to using levelless one. Okay, so the Red Angel suit you receive, you will be able to re-engineer. Good to know. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, SFC one hundred wants to know uh, if you banish an enemy um, and they die while banished, uh, would that break missions that have kill all X because they don't come back. I believe they do still come back and count as a killed corpse when they return. Yeah. We yeah. tested that pretty hard. We're pretty confident it's not going to break missions. I use qualifiers there because there's always a little bit of question marks. Also, uh, confirmed buffs do stay on you when you turn into Red Angel. Fabulous. Uh, Wraith Shadow is asking why the guy who is not talking is on screen while the guy who isn't talking is uh, because John doesn't have a webcam. So and I do. Uh, someone send <laughs> someone send John a webcam. Is the and, answer uh, to that question. Weston will be talking when we do animatory questions. Yeah, I'm sure there will be more of soon. Uh, someone <laughs> asked. Here's a good Weston question. Weston question. Western question. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody asked if it was uh, possible to port these lovely animations you made for the Red Angel suit back over to Champions Online. <laughs> I don't know. You've that... done some work on both games, so I'm curious. <laughs> That is possible. Yes, mm. it is possible. Um, I don't know of anything that they're planning to use or anything in the future, but it is entirely possible that we can do that. Yeah. Cool. Well, you um, said the word future, so there's already a thematic tie-in. Yeah, That's exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've seen enough of this tooltip. Um, there is something very important I've forgotten to do with this entire stream, though, so excuse me one second while I stand up. I'm still here. I'm just not here. <laughs> now there's no one on screen who's talking. Yeah, uh, <laughs> let's see if this still works. How is everyone doing today, chat? <laughs> All right. It's out of batteries, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> Only like three people in chat will get this, but I'm, I'm, but I'm doing it. I have no idea what I, I, John. Do you know what he's doing? I don't know. Oh my no! <laughs> All right, ready? Henshin. Yeah, yeah, that just feels right. We're gonna need to add a transforming belt to this, guys. Uh, so I'm gonna need you to get back into the editor and do that right away, and add some poses like this before you transform. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> and yes, this is for people in chat who are saying yes. This is from Common Rider Blade, also known as the best Common Rider show. Fight me. And boy, <laughs> it got dusty in my display case. All right. Um. So let me see if I can pull up. Hmm. I'm gonna switch back to guest view for a second before I mess with anything, so that I don't accidentally spoil a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> like I've already done. Um. Oh, you know what I do want to ask you about, Weston? Because I don't think this is much of a spoiler uh, mm -hmm. to say. Oh, actually, here, I can. Let's see. Can I show this without spoiling that? One second. Uh, okay, so here's a question. Um, yeah. You and Scott had a very special mm -hmm. new tool that you got to use for one of the cutscenes in the upcoming update. Do you want to talk about your very special new tool while I show off your awesome preview of this item? Absolutely, and I gotta say, it was more than just one cutscene. Oh, it was more um, than one? Oh, I'm so oh, excited! That, it was mu It was multiple of them. But, oh, that's, yes. that's really exciting. I thought it was just the one, and I've already seen how good that one looks. Alright, tell us yeah. about this amazing thing. Um, and I, uh, Weston, tell, mm -hmm. tell away. Yeah, so for the longest time, um, Star Trek Online and pretty much all of our games, uh, we always have done hand key animation. If you don't know what that means, that's essentially um, anything that moves in our game, we make it by hand. We pose it by hand. We don't have any sort of mocap sort of thing. We've tried it before, but it never really worked until recently. So we recently actually now have a mocap suit that we are able to capture. Yeah, we're able to capture some uh, some 
full body animation. And guys, um, we'll it looks it. really, really yeah. cool. <laughs> it does. It does. I, I, I was skeptical of it at first just because I'm a hand key animator at heart, like most <laughs> animators are, honestly. But after playing with it, after using it a couple times, it's just that is really good. I I was really impressed with how it came out. Yeah. And uh, li like you were talking about, Scott is too, and I think you are too. <laughs> I am. I very much am. And now, uh, it's not too much of a spoiler to say what uh, character you were playing. Do you want to? Uh, do you want? Because you got to put on the motion capture suit, right? I well, yes, but I was actually not the one acting. Oh, okay. Uh, and Scott actually was the one doing uh, all the acting. Oh, really? For, for the, our recording session that time. Yeah. Oh, neat. Very cool. Uh, so yes, when the next time the the next time you guys see a cut scene with Jaula, just remember it's Scott <laughs> doing all of that <laughs> and doing a great job, by the way. Uh, I want to get my hands <laughs> on that suit and try some stuff. Oh yeah, um, this should be fun. It's fun. Uh, Master of Overskill says, uh, "Does that mean updates for character movement animations?" Um, uh, I'm gonna guess no, because that's a different system. It's most. This is mostly gonna be for cutscene stuff. Yeah. Um, we can. We have tried using it for uh, like character movement and stuff, and there's potential that we can do that. Oh, cool. Um, like that is something that we're looking into. Very cool. Um, and Duncan uh, wants to know if you could use me as a mocap actor for Klingon fight scenes because I have stage combat experience, and I agree with yes. this. You should do this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I sent Scott and Weston an email about that. Um, I don't know, a couple of months ago, and they were like, "Oh, damn, we already." did the fight scene so if there's another one um i'll try and i'll try and uh slither my way in there cool <laughs> yeah uh can i zoom in and around that preview box jack sparrow drive why yes yes i can would you like to see the red angel suit from almost any angle now weston this was a this this preview thing we've done it for ships before but never for a ground item do you want to talk a little bit about um the process of getting this this sucker ready to go yeah, so um, as I understand it, this is kind of a, a little bit of a systems thing that Jeremy was into, but I think I understood how it worked, is uh, what you're looking at there is effectively just a costume, a an effect that is a costume. Um, so anytime like we've seen like a ship in there, and the same for like the Dot Seven droid that was a while back, uh, that's what we call a, a D costume. I don't know what that acronym stands for, but it, it it's essentially what you could like a the stay in universe a hologram of a costume. <laughs> uh, it's not an actual entity. It's kind of it's an illusion that it's there. Um, so that's what that's what we uh, what we got here. This is a special costume that's not the actual version of the armor, but a replica of it that nice. you can view in the preview link for like. Nice. All right. Well, since it was asked about a bunch while we're chatting here, I'm gonna jump over to. Um the uh tailor that's not the tailor that's my inventory and see uh now uh, do you just as, as soon as you have the item you have access to it in the tailor john uh yeah okay so i should have access to it now whoops that's well you gave it to yourself with the cheat instead of getting it from the way we hooked it up so oh so i may not maybe okay let's... let me get you the tailoring token id okay that would be great uh, all right so we'll we'll play with this in a second In the meantime, you guys can judge Jet's fashion sense, <laughs> which you shouldn't, because her fashion sense is impeccable. Okay, <laughs> looking at it, I think we set you it can... up so that the item is the token. You should have access to it already. All right, cool. Let me let me cry about how badly my mouse is jerking around the screen because this wireless mouse is terrible. All right, it is going. Come on! <laughs> Let me see if m sometimes moving it closer to the computer helps, which just means I have to do this weird cross-armed thing. Yep, that helped. Let this be a lesson, everyone. Buy a wired mouse. Yep. Well, you can always have to put spread new wires across my room, and my daughter will die. If the uh, signal's failing and the batteries have been in there a while, fresh batteries can help. Mm, that might be it. That's it. It has been used a lot. Uh, okay, is it in? Do you know what tab it's under? Uh, it's in that. It should be in that upper right drop down that you got open now. It should just say uh there should be a separate tab just for this. I th 
eat. Um, I'm pretty sure, but I don't spend much time in the tailor for what I do, so I'm gonna Let me just check and make sure it didn't show up in armored. Uh, that's not the Red Angel suit, is it? Is it? Actually, it might be. No, that looks like the. I mean, is it? It's not ambiguous because it's named Red Angel suit. Oh, when okay. You get, when you find it, so. All right. So then know. I definitely didn't. So why don't you send me the, uh, uh, the reward pack button and see if that we'll see if that does it. This is what I get for cheating on stream. <laughs> ah, people are saying that's Daniels. Okay. Uh, Beard of Borg, I see you, and I believe you, and I saw your image. Uh, Beard of Borg, for you guys, um, is uh, someone who um, had ch challenge. I challenged to, since they had a TOS unaligned character who was still in the TOS area, but was level 65, I challenged them to complete all the reputations up to tier 6 um, while still I in the TOS that. area. And they have done so, so I said I would get them a title for that. I'm going to figure out what that title is and get it to you, don't worry. I, I saw that. I was. I am seriously impressed that someone had the dedication to do that. Yeah. I think I might have lost my mind trying to do that myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not that one. <laughs> All right. While we're waiting, know I see if there's any the Facebook choke questions I should be answering here. <laughs> someone asking what the next mist mixer stream is. Apparently. Uh, nope. Oh, apparently there was some kind of new coat that I didn't see. I might. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we're still waiting for John to get back to me with the reward thing, or did you already put it in chat? Uh, I did not. Um, and it's not something I can just, like, oh. there, there's not a reward box. Oh, okay. It's a, uh, I'm I'm not sure if I should say what it is, but Got it's it. not something okay. I can just base. Uh, what I'm doing is looking at my check-in history to figure out exactly how the <laughs> how the costume is hooked up. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I apologize for the wait, folks. Um, why don't you just move on and cover some other stuff while I'm digging? Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think of what other stuff to cover. We've covered the the suit and the powers and how cool it is, and maybe I'll just play around with it a little bit more while we're while we're okay, talking. I think I found it. Okay. I mean, it's never boring to see watching the angels go and destroy stuff. This All is right, going. Man. to This is probably going to become my new meta armor for my own character. Honestly, yeah. Honest. Just flying it for these few seconds, it's really fun. I'm gonna definitely have to do this event. I'm it's not nice to have an in case anyway. of emergencies break enemies button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did send you the costume unlock token. You should okay. be able to give yourself that. Um, it might be you might not be able to use give item if it yells at you. Use give numeric. Give numeric, and then I have to put one at the end, right? Yeah. Okay. Just do that. All right. I saw nothing, which sometimes means this that worked, <laughs> since you don't get any notification that you got a costume unlocked. And it yells at you if it failed, so it probably successfully gave you the item. Yeah, with any luck. All right, uniform. Hmm. I still don't see it. And there's nothing in armored. Uh, so unless it's in jacket loose for some reason. <laughs> nope. I don't think okay. it is. All right, this is this is um. Probably a bug to do with the way I granted it to myself, or the way that Jet built and leveled up this character. Sometimes we encounter stuff like that. Uh, just in case, I will mention it to to people um, in a, when we get off the stream. Uh, but okay, so let's do one last uh, blowing up some dinosaurs as the Red Angel, um, folks. I'm gonna keep any... working on it in the background too. I okay. might be able to get you a solution before we go. Oh, we're not looking at that the uh, Star Trek stuff though. We're just looking at your faces. Which are beautiful, but not what we need. <laughs> oh, and now we're not looking at. Okay. Ugh. All right. Solving problems left and right. Tension. You got to say that every single time, guys. The power won't work unless you do. <laughs> oh, God, this maneuverability. I love it so, even though I'm being held in place now. Honestly, that's my favorite part. Yeah. 
it's going to be great for those missions that, like, oh, man, those TFOs, like, oh, man, I'm stuck on a Borg platform and it's about to eat me. Uh, Red Angel time! <laughs> <laughs> it takes a while, though, because you transform and do that knockback, so yeah. I, you probably need to run a bit to actually get, like, net positive. Yeah, it's true. It's not, a, it's not a get-out-of-jail-free card. Something I am really oh. not certain where this is hiding. Something kind <laughs> of Taylor is confusing to my something kind of entertaining. Uh that I remember while making the animations for this too. Um the first animation when you activate this where you jump and spin up and all the do that kind of cool thing right here. Yeah. Um <laughs> I remember I remember you, John, actually coming over to my desk at the time. Uh and we were trying to discuss uh what the uh, what the power would be. And I made that animation a fair bit before we the started on the suit. Itself. Yeah, uh, I sta I started on the animation for that quite a while before the uh, the power itself was made. Um, and I remember you coming over to ask me like what uh, what the what the request for the for the power was, and I it had been so long since I had made it I couldn't really remember. <laughs> I remember because so we teased to... this thing at STLV like two years ago. Yeah, maybe last year, yeah. but still, something like that. But like, I was trying—I was trying to remember what the what the power was, and I, I, I said, if I remember correctly, it was something like, it was supposed to be like this super ability or something that had like a fifteen-minute cooldown or something. Is like, oh man, when you activated it, it was like. Uh, immediate knockback of all the enemies around you, instant heal and revive of your entire team, and then another knockback or something. And I just remember wow. this because, like, for the next five seconds or so, John was trying to get his jaw off the floor <laughs> <laughs> with me saying all this. Oh. <laughs> because of how unbelievably broken of an ability that it sounded like. Oh. Um, John, question for you from the chat. Uh, if you equip this suit on your bridge officers, will they use its abilities and transform? It is captain only. It is captain only, okay. We uh, took a good stab at that, but be crittering bridge officers is a bridge too far for the technology. <laughs> uh, pun intended. <laughs> Indeed. Also, I sent you a new uh, a piece new of text. You paste that into your console, you should get yourself the tailor online. Okay. Well, then I'll kill this dinosaur and do that. So you have the ability to time travel, but you're using it to kill dinosaurs. <laughs> I see. They call me the asteroid. Okay, that says outfit unlocked. I have hopes. Do do do. -do. Let's see. Modify. <laughs> Duncan Idaho, Idaho says, "What killed the dinosaurs? Me." <laughs> All right. Uh, it will have been me. Yes. Later, in the future, before past. now. And yeah, it looks like this is pretty well colorable. Nice. Nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play around with this while we're here. Let's see. Do a nice bright purple for this. And I'm not sure what that's coloring. And uh, okay, that's that. Trying to match my hair here. Uh, so yeah, it looks like I'll use the I'll use the hands. Okay, let me get those so I can see them. So yeah, for all oh, your face no. Barbie needs, we should have never we should have never put a color in the name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone is saying Time Angel Force. You're, yep, that's exactly what I'm making, guys. Yeah, every member of the Angel Force is me. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I've been here the whole time. <laughs> something, something, many worlds, something, something. Leave me alone. Uh, and yes, I am doing this in deliberately garish colors so you guys can see the customization that's available to you. Looks like there's a lot of fun little red angel parts. I, unfortunately, it doesn't look like they'll only be available in this costume tab, but that is a-okay. Oops! I guess I was <laughs> dying while that happened. Those Voth over there were like, hey, 
You can't be changing costumes right now. We're shooting at you. And if people were wondering why you can't unlock the tailor anywhere, that's why. Okay. This is probably a safe place to do that. <laughs> people are saying, pro tip, no changing outfits during a battle. Yeah, that's pretty smart. Yep. Uh, so I do remember one funny thing that I forgot to mention earlier. Um, we had a, a hilarious bug crop up the other day after uh, Weston had done all this work to uh, um, create the uh, excellent, excellent um, uh, Red Angel preview that you guys saw earlier. Um, somebody attempted to open said preview in space, uh, where it was discovered quite quickly that uh, in space, you you instead of have because of the way the effect worked, instead of having these giant, lovely red angel wings, you had these two itty bitty cupid wings coming off your shoulders. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I took a screenshot of it so we could share it later. Yeah. It was wonderful. That's 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 one of the uh, the uh, the effects of having a fake costume, kind of <laughs> like we were talking about a little earlier. Yeah. Because <laughs> once you got up into space, it scaled the costume for space, right? Yes. Uh, when you're in sector space, specifically, uh, you're scaled down like to like 20% of your size or something. Simply because sector space would be massive otherwise. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what madness have I have I wrought? Oh, those straps right there. Okay. I didn't even know that you could customize it to this degree. This is I really didn't cool. either. This is great. I am yeah. definitely going to be, I mean, not uh, probably not this garish, but I'll definitely be running around in my own, you know, common Rider outfit. This is a bit more uh, common Rider ZO uh, <laughs> than common Rider, you know, Blade or Fies. Yes, I'm making deep cut references. <laughs> <laughs> You should know by now that this is coming. And... Okay, and head. Let's finish this up with the helmet. If I can find it. Oh, interesting. Ah, there it is. So we will that and that and that and that and that and that and there we go. Nice. <laughs> Very stylish. <laughs> and after all that, I got you cannot edit outfits here. That's why you just said no, you don't <laughs> cheat the tailor, guys. <laughs> Uh, it's funny it was made illegal twice by the system. I know. Uh, Ultra Z, you're right. I did mean X Aid, not CO. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, oh, um, Gold Star Standard Chess. Uh, I am waiting for an email from Q with all of your contact information so I can send you guys all the codes, and then I will send you all the codes. So uh, that is what will happen in that order. Uh, okay, yeah, somebody said you could make a Red Angel look uh, very specifically like a, a certain Nintendo character, and I'm sure we'll see that running around. All right. Well, with that in mind, folks, thank you guys both, uh, both the, the face of Weston and the ghost of John for joining me today. Um, and thank you for everybody uh, hanging out in chat. Uh, I appreciate you guys and all of your questions. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so... Uh, somebody said that looks like Camille Armor from Power Rangers Jungle Fury. You're right, it does. Uh, I love how much I've made my chat into a Tokusatsu fan fest today. <laughs> uh, is there anything final that you would like to say about your uh, about the Red Angel suit? No, no, it's pretty good. There's some yeah. there's some little stuff we didn't talk about, like the the guns, you know, push things back very slightly, but they're they're little polishy things. Okay, cool. Oh, well, people enjoy it. Uh, Almaclaw yeah. and Karasov wants to know if the suit can be activated in social zones. Good question. <laughs> Give me a second to alt tab. Here's to I hoping. want to say yes. I don't see why it would be disabled. Yeah. Uh, Master of Overskill, your buffs are not removed. There was an answer on that. 
Yeah, you are allowed to activate it in social zones. Uh, yes, folks, that's a good point. The uh, Dijon Cyanide wanted to make sure I reminded you all, um, PC has an extra long maintenance tomorrow starting at uh, 5 a.m. our time, so uh, be careful. Um, and uh, since you all have been so amazing and hung out and waited um, during this, uh, this lovely, lovely chat and stream, I guess I could give you somewhat of a reward. 